spooky, huh? I learned a long time ago, you gotta start off your pitch with a bang. But I'm an honest guy, see, and... Well, I gotta play it square with you. Actually, a plain old farmer lives in his house. A nice, easy-going sort of guy. Now get the law after him. Uh, like I was saying, he lives on the outskirts of this little town, uh, Hicksburg by name. No, I'm not kidding. That's the name, Hicksburg. Scout's on her. It's a quiet place. Oh, nothing much for the young people to do. <clears throat> well, hardly anything. Anyhow, it was Saturday night, and me and my partner was eating in his fancy restaurant. A regular gourmet's joint. Him and me are what you might call uh, investment specialists. We were discussing the latest market reports and looking forward to a quiet game of chess before retirement. Oh, uh, that's my partner. I'm the handsome guy on the left. Will there be anything else? Right now, I couldn't afford what I'm thinking. I'm sure of that. Oh, wait, baby, wait. I wonder if you can tell me how to... Oh, I can't even read my own writing here. I wonder if you tell me how to get to uh, first base with you tonight. Hmm? Fresh guy. Oh, well, at least I tried. Trying is all we ever do, ever since we hit this town. We never should have come here in the first place. Well, I guess a guy's got to be a native in this burg before Dane will give him a break. Oh, don't give me that. Let's go home. I'm pushed. Oh, no, wait a minute, man. This is country. Like, things move slow here. I tell you, I got a tip that this town's a cinch for a quick buck. Skip it, will you? I'm going to bed. And we're pulling out of here in the morning. Well, I'm loaded for action tonight. I'm taking a ride to see what I can pick up. Fat chance. And remember, that car is half mine. Well, you'll have the front seat. I won't be using your half much tonight. Big lover. All mouth, no action. Hey, uh, you want to lift back to the boarding house? Nah. No, I'm going to walk off my great expectation. I wouldn't want to hold back the wheels of progress. Or is it the progress of a big wheel? <laughs> What was that? Low lightning. What else? There's no clouds out there. Well, how's the recruiting coming along, Lieutenant? Not bad. How about them young'uns? I wonder what they're watching out there. I tell you, I saw a flying saucer. What are you fellas yapping about out here? Duke just said he saw a flying saucer. Only one? Nobody's got a right to brag these days unless they see at least six. And in different colors. <laughs> this one was blue. Oh, Lieutenant, the boys are kidding about seeing a flying saucer. Oh? Yeah, Duke says he saw one over there. You better watch out. He might be giving some of you orders next month. Yeah, you're right. I'm hooked. Dragging me in feet first. Don't you had a date with Joan tonight? 
Uh, she's meeting me here at 9.30. Ah, she's probably fussing with a new dress. Oh, who are you kidding? We all know she's waiting for her old man to get out of the house. What kind of a dress takes that long to get into? <laughs> you have to admit, she's got a lot of the right things to put in the right places. <laughs> yeah, and they're all mine. Oh, right, she comes. See you later. Hiya, Princess. Hi, Johnny. Most of the gang that love us point. Yeah, what a lousy way to spend a Saturday night. Look. Wowee. You like it? Great. I'm going home. Come on. Goodbye, Jack. Unsigned kids on my property. Looks crowded at Lover's Point. Hope we don't hit Larkin's bull on the way up. my growth. That's old Walt. Larkin's bull. He's always hanging around for a handout, see? Get that beast away from here! That bull drank so much beer one night that he got the blind staggers. So you know you needn't be afraid of him. I'm not anymore. Good. Done what? Turn out the beer can. Well, why not? Well, you know the trouble we've been having with Mr. Larkin without messing up his farm with beer cans. Yeah, you know, let Larkin blow his top. This place was Lover's Lane long before it was Larkin's cow pasture. Yeah, but I think. Nah, I got a cure for that. For what? For thinking. More beer. Uh, wait just a minute. Not so fast. I'm out of breath. Proves you love me. I'm eloping with you tonight, isn't that proof enough? And then some. Seeing how your father hates me. Oh, it isn't that bad. Art. Artie. Artie, at last we made it. We hit the jackpot, Artie. Turn off that light, you bum. Artie, come on. Oh, you were millionaires. Yeah, yeah, go to bed, huh? But this is different. This is big. Yeah, oh. Oh, my God, I'm not trying to give you a pitch. But this, you and me, we're going to put on an exhibition of the first and only truly authentic flying saucer. You, you woke me up to tell me that, huh? Yeah, I told you it was big, didn't I? Well, I seen one. I, I seen one just like all these crazy people have been talking about. I seen one. And it's big and round and it glows and it gives off a funny noise like... 
Like that. Like that, huh? Yeah, yeah, that's it. And it landed over there by the, the, the Lock and Farm property. It's great, isn't it? <laughs> Okay. Okay. But when I'm rolling that door, don't say I didn't invite you in. Okay? You invite it out. I'll handle it myself. Well, go ahead. Go ahead, go back to sleep. Ah, uh, sleep your life away. before they even miss us. Oh, no more sneaking up here to be alone. No more outsmarting your father. This ought to make it official. Oh, it's brilliant. Bad luck. I don't know why these saucers always have to wait till nighttime to put in an appearance. Where do you think it is? Well, from what these kids said, it must be somewhere northeast of town. That checks with the last radar report from our radio station. Well, hadn't we better get right out there? The general was pretty sore at us for letting the last one get away. The Army intelligence really scooped us that time. Scoop, did you say? Uh, just a figure of speech, sir. Well, it had better be, Lieutenant. I'm going to caution you about one thing. Yes, sir. I know that in civilian life, you were a publicity man. What are you getting at, sir? Just this. Our job is to prevent a possible nationwide panic by keeping the information from the public. I think our public information officer is about the last thing we need right now. I didn't request this assignment, sir. I know that. Uh, yes, sir. But get this straight, Wilkins. Yes, sir. If you let one word of this leak out to your old cronies, I'll have you court-martialed and shot. Do I make myself perfectly clear? Yes, sir. Yes, indeed, sir. Good. Now go down the hall and wake up Sergeant Zerskin and Carter. Tell them to load their weapons. Yes, sir. Wasting time. Hey, cut those lights! You're crabbing our style. Hey, you want Larkin should catch us? Joan should worry. Her old man, city attorney. Hey, come on, turn them off. Oh, I'd hate to get caught at a time like this. Yeah, I can see your old man helping me. Tonight of all nights. Be careful, Johnny. I'd hate to hit Larkin's old bull. Don't worry. I can drive this road blindfolded. You've had enough practice. A lot, honey, but never enough. Johnny, slow up. I can't see a thing. No backseat driving till we're married. Get us all killed. The darn fool didn't have his lights on, sir. The well, lights blinded me. I couldn't see a thing. We want to get there in one piece. It's only another quarter mile of the highway. There's nothing to be afraid of. Don't worry. Let's get him to the hospital. Johnny! You saw it. What is it? It's disgusting. All the things to hit. Whatever it is, I killed it. Johnny, I'm getting in.
fender must have cut the tire when we hit that thing. Are we stuck here? Well, we can't drive on it. It'll ride off the rim, and I don't have a spare. Let's go to Larkin's house and call the police. Amazing. One of them actually landed intact. What a story. That must explain the blue lights our jet pilot's been telling us about. I wonder how many regular airline crack-ups it's caused. If that's all it can do, we're lucky. But if these things should prove to be unfriendly... Yeah, you've got a point there, sir. Shall we drive closer so we can get a better look? Uh, no. I think we ought to wait right here. Someone might be watching us right now. Sergeant, get me division headquarters. Let me get some engineers out here and see what's inside these things. Calling control. Coming. Do you think it could be from another planet, sir? Lieutenant, when you've been in the service as long as I have, you learn you don't have to think. You just follow standard operating procedure. Yes, sir. In this case, SOP calls for engineers, not guesses. Yes, sir. Excuse me, sir. I have division headquarters on now. Give me that thing, Sergeant. I want to report this myself. Division headquarters, this is Colonel Ambrose. I want to report that the saucer did land near Pelham Wood. Maybe he can't hear you. Hey, open up in there! Hello? Hello, Mr. Larkin? Anybody home? Hurry, Johnny, will you help me right in here? Okay. Operator, give me police headquarters. It's an emergency. Hello, police headquarters? What's the trouble, young fellow? This is Carter. Johnny Carter. I'm at the Larkin farmhouse near Pelham Woods. Yes? Yes, I know. You saw little green men. Oh, sure. They're from another planet. Well, if you see them again, give them my love and send them home, huh? <laughs> Saturday night. That's official. He thought I was kidding him. Here, take these. Go in the kitchen, try and find some candles. I'll try the police again. The darn phone's gone, Dad. Bo Lucky must have got it. Here, take this. There's some more candles in the kitchen. something we came in to call the police the door was open well they don't give you no right to come in here who was it you hit it wasn't a person it was a... Yes, i know i know it was bound to happen with you kids running all over my property i'll bet you killed one of my prize heifers and if you did you're going to pay for it mind you that and i'll just call the police too phone's dead that's what you say Get over there, the both of you. Get over there. Hello, hello. So it is. 
See, I told you, we didn't kill one of your cows. It was, it was a little green man, a monster. Have you kids been drinking? No, sir. That ain't turpentine I smell. It's alcohol. You know, that's funny. I smell it, too. Yeah, I smelled it before. What's your name, son? Johnny Carter. I worked out of Mullins gas station. I thought I'd seen you before. But we didn't hurt any of your animals. It well, was what just... kind of kin folks these brats oh, have? Okay. Nothing like okay, that. Okay, Mr. Larkin. Messing around okay. on my face. And... Take it easy now. And you tell your young friends to keep off of my property, and they'll get their backside loaded with rock salt. Now get. Come on, get out of here. Well, I'll know where to find you when I need you. Now get. I have to go back and fix that flat. Oh, would have to happen tonight of all nights. Come on, honey. Well? Hello, Sadie. Mrs. Larkin. I want you to send a couple of cops out here and get them smooching kids off of my property. I've got to go out and check my livestock. And tell them to hurry up, Sadie. Beehive, too, when I mm. when I catch. Oh, I wish those bees would sting them to death. Messy youngins. <laughs> Anybody home? Uh, will you get me Watkins 105-36? Listen, Art, this time I got proof. Well, what is it, Joe? Listen, Art, I can't tell you what it is. I swear I'm telling the truth, but... Oh, I can't tell you what it is, see? Why? Of course, I don't know what it is. It's stuck underneath the car. Look, get in the cab and come over here right away. I need your help. Yeah, well, that's too bad. I'm going back to sleep. But, Art! But nothing. Goodbye. Oh, wait, 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 don't hang up. Look, will you do me one favor? Clean everything out of the refrigerator. The refrigerator? Yeah. What I'm bringing home is perishable. We got to keep it on ice. You got it, Art? Everything out of the refrigerator. Yeah, yeah, that's it. That's my boy, Art. Oh, you won't regret this, I swear to you. You believe me, don't you? Yeah, every, every, everything Well, I'll be right out. home with it. Yeah, every, every, everything out. Yeah, everything. You got it. I got it, I got it. Yeah. 
consign hoodlums. Refrigerator. Interesting. Uh, with some kind of a crazy hammer. I'll bet he thinks the car is responsible for killing his buddy. What do you mean? Well, you know how the savages blame a rain god for every storm. Oh, Johnny, let's get out of here. Come on, honey. Oh. oh, how much further? It's only another quarter mile to the highway. Come on. again, sir? Uh, go ahead. We have you surrounded. I don't believe anybody's in that thing. I think it's probably remote controlled. Would you like to walk out there in the open and test your theory? <laughs> uh, well, no, sir. Not particularly and start thinking of a way to explain this thing without throwing the nation into a complete panic. Yes, sir. Oh, I wish we'd stuck to the road. These shoes just weren't made for hiking. I'm sure this way. Come on, honey. Hey, a police car. They must have believed you after all. Come on, let's go back there. The police will take care of those things. Pardon me, sir. Maybe if we... Fired a few rounds, it might scare them out. Anyway, get some reaction. 
All right, go ahead. Go ahead, Corporal. Fire a few rounds. Four volunteers to work a settle in torches. I'm gonna get inside that thing and see what makes it tick. Yes, sir. that again. You say you were driving without lights? Yes, sir. But it wouldn't have made any difference anyway. He was so small, he wouldn't have seen him. Small? Well, he couldn't have been over four feet high. Yeah, and he was all green except his head. Green? Yes, sir. Oh, boy, we're sure glad you came along. We were really scared. I bet you are. Hey, Joe, <clears throat> get the dock over here. Now, look, kids, before I take you down to headquarters, I want you to do something for me. I want you to blow up this little balloon. What for? Never mind, just blow. Hold it up. Oh, we're wasting time. Aren't you going to do anything about the little green men? This may be a whole invasion. Blow. Oh, this is the silliest thing yet. The balloon test, huh? Yeah. Did you ever hear such a cock and bull story? Green men, spaceships. Wow. In my day, we were content with pink elephants. But kids these days, and tough. The girl says to me, you don't call him human, do you? How do you like that? Well, what do you expect? With all the killings they see in the movies and all. You smell that alcohol? Those kids must have killed at least a quart of liquor. Hey, uh, Mr. Detective, I'm through now. Can we get going? For a guy who's committed a serious crime, you're awfully anxious to get to the police station. Crime? Well, you don't call killing one of those monsters a crime. Something's awfully screwy around here. Something or somebody. Come on, now, let's get going. Hey, uh, wait a minute, I, I just want in. to explain this. Wait, I, look, wait a minute, now, I want get to tell in, you about this. I, wait a minute. Now, if you just read that before you sign it. Look, this is silly. We told you what happened. Now, why don't you do something? That's just what we are doing, miss. Hey, this is no statement. It's a confession. You admit driving the car, don't you? Well, yeah, sure, and but... With the lights off? Yeah, but I told you it was just... Well, buddy boy, whether you realize it or not, driving without lights and killing a man is a crime in this state. Killing a man? Oh, look, you don't call killing that green monster, the, that thing, a man. And I haven't even added in the drunk driving. When we get the results of that balloon test, that'll be another strike against you. Look, officer, my father's city attorney, and I demand that you send for him right away. <laughs> I've been waiting for that. Well, it so happens, Miss Hayden, that I know your father, and he's already been sent for. He'll straighten you out, all right. I'm not saying another word, even if you try to beat it out of me. Beat it out of me? It never fails. You try to be nice to some young punk, and the first thing you know, you're up in charges of using a third degree. What's this about a third degree? Oh, Daddy! These people are crazy. Johnny and I have had a horrible time. I thought you told me you were going out with Bill Thomas, not with this roughneck. But don't you want to hear about the monster? I heard that ridiculous story when the sergeant called me. Now, Joan, listen to me. If it's humanly possible, I'll get you out of this mess. As for that boy, he can take his medicine. Oh, thanks. Thanks a lot. We're ready for the identification, sir. We'll be right in. If you'll come with me, we'll make the formal identification. Wait till you see this thing, Mr. Hayden. Then you'll believe us. All right, Jim.
Well? I didn't run over this man. Are you still on that kick? I ran over a monster. You see, Mr. Hayden, I didn't exaggerate. A little green man, I tell you. We've heard enough of that. But I saw it. Do you know who he is? Well, according to the driver's license we found on him, his name is Joe Gruen. He lives at 121 Maple Avenue. Where did he work? Nowhere, as far as I could find out. Seems he and a friend of his drifted into town about a month ago. Friend? Fellow he lives with. We tried to get him on the phone to come over to identify the body, and there was no answer. I see. Can I talk to them alone for a minute? Oh, certainly, Mr. Hayden. Uh, use my office. Come on. All right, Jim. Take him back. Come in. Now, get this, both of you. We're lucky in one respect. The man you've killed is a nobody. There'll be only one person interested in the charges brought against you. That's his roommate. But, Daddy, I swear to you, Johnny didn't... Will you be quiet? At least Johnny has sense enough to listen. Now then, tomorrow I'll go out and talk to this Joe Gruen's roommate. And see what I can do for Johnny. I can't do anything until then. Come on, Joan, I'm taking you home. I'm not going unless Johnny goes. How much longer, man? We've almost got it, just as soon as we cut through this seam. Hey, look at that, looks like some sort of view. Hey, let's get out of here. Looks like there's been some kind of an explosion over in Pelham Woods. What was that? Looks like something blew up. What do you suppose it was? Joan, those little monsters, or whatever they are, are smarter than all of us put together. What do you mean? Remember when we watched one of them pound away at the fender of my car? Yes, but what's so smart about that? Well, don't you see? They killed this man, Joe Gruen, and then dented the fender. It's all a frame-up. Whatever it was, it sure burned out in a hurry. Sergeant, send a prowl car out there right away. All right, sir. We thought they were mad at the car. Joan, we've got to go back there and get some evidence. Something they'll believe. If we don't, I'm going to jail. But Johnny Howard, they'll never let us out of here. The window. It's wide open. Now, what about those two kids? I think I've talked a little sense into their heads. A little fools, they're gone. So you talked some sense into them, did you? Hey, the car's running. Let's take it. Now, don't put this in the record. I'll take the responsibility. Yeah. Still here? Of course I'm still here. Where should I be? I just saw your car drive off, so naturally I assume that you... If those two kids stole my car off... Mr. Hayden, you said you'd be responsible for this. I hope you'll know what you're doing. So do I. So do I. Gee, Johnny, I'm awfully worried about taking this car. Compared to everything else, what's a little car theft? Come on, let's go. Away from me inside. Oh, there's nothing to be afraid of, honey. But I can handle him with this. What's going on here, Lieutenant? Uh, everything's under control, officer. One of our jets crashed. Oh. We have five calls. It's our busy night, too. We've been flooded with calls from people who say they've seen flying saucers and little green monsters. 
Wonder how that rumor ever got started. <laughs> you got me, Sarge. Here we go again. See you later. Johnny, this is silly. The police were all over here and they didn't find a thing. Yeah, I guess you're right. Might as well go back. Johnny, but I just can't relax. Yeah, I guess you're right. Would have to happen tonight of all nights. Johnny, it's cold in here. What is this, a reflex action? Just seems like the natural thing to do out here. Johnny. I wonder if any of the gang saw those things. How do you mean? Well, there are a lot of them out there, and, and if any of them did see it, that would convince the police that we were telling the truth. Sometimes I think it doesn't matter how many times kids try to tell them something. They still won't believe it. It's an idea. Let's go to the point and see if any of the gang is still there. What have we got to lose? What's so funny? Well, I expected to be frightened on my wedding night, but nothing like this. <laughs> Don't you see? At last we've got some evidence. Yes, but how do we get it to the police station? You got a point there. We've got to get somebody out here and see this thing. But who, Johnny? Well, remember at the police station, your father was right about one thing. The only person who'd even be interested in listening to us is Joe Gruen's roommate. He's our only chance. But where is he? Well, don't you remember? The police said that Joe Gruen lived at, at 121 Maple Street. We'll go there and find him. Oh, yes, yes, I remember. Well, come on, let's go. Well, first, let's get my car, Johnny. My legs are killing me. Oh, all right, all right. Who goes watching the place? Killed by little green men, huh? That is without a doubt the craziest story that I've ever heard. Look, will you phone and check with the police? They've been trying to get you all night, but nobody's answered. Yeah, thanks to these. When you live with a big mouth like Joe Gruen, you gotta have a secret weapon. Will you please call the police? Please. Okay, okay. But if this is some kind of a gag... Whatever you do, don't mention our names. If they know we're here, we're done for. Don't worry. Hello, police station? Uh, this is Art Burns. I live at 121 Maple Street with my roommate, Joe Gruen. Did you say Joe Gruen? We've been trying to get a hold of you. Your roommate was killed tonight. Victim of a hit and run. Killed? Do you know who did it? Uh, a couple of kids, a boy and a girl. They've given us a slip temporarily, but we'll catch him again, don't worry. You mean you had him and you let him get away? Uh, yeah. And were they scared? 
should have heard him talking about little green men. I have. You have what? Oh, nothing. Never mind. Uh, thanks, officer. Thanks a lot. Yeah. Well, can you come down tomorrow and claim the body? Yeah. Yeah, I guess so. Well, are we telling you the truth? Well, your story checks out. Joe kept trying to tell me something about it. Will you go with us now? I'll say I will. Now, I'm not saying there is a claw, mind you. But if there is one, I'm going to get a picture of it. <laughs> wow, that's a hot one. What's so funny? I was just thinking how Joe's going to feel when I put him on exhibition as the world's first victim of a spaceman. <laughs> Does it work? It worked all right for the Nazi I took it from. You uh, disarmed a Nazi soldier? Sure. Well, of course, he was dead at the time. Uh, can we be going now? Sure. Just give me a couple seconds to put some clothes on. I thought you said the police had your car. They do. This belongs to Joe. Some heap. <laughs> oh, darn it. The battery's almost dead. When was the last time you checked the water? Well, every time the man at the gas station asked me. Not the radiator. He means the battery water. Well, what's that? How about a push? I'm a guest here, remember? All right, all right. Come on, Joan. Hey, I like this. No top, no motor, but a brand new shiny spotlight. Somebody afraid of the dark? I didn't get it for that. What did you get it for? Well, a girl always needs an extra mirror. What a pile of junk. Oh, please watch your language. Elvis is very sensitive. Elvis? Yeah, the gang calls her Elvis. She pans and shimmies, but she really goes. Get rid of him. Oh, yes, sir. I gave him the story that one of our jets crashed and that we were taking care of everything. Did he believe you? Colonel, sir, you're talking to the man that made the papers believe the 45-year-old B-girls were teenage maidens. This was duck soup. 
We're about uh, through, sir. Good. And they finished? Have the camouflage boys go on to their work? Yes, sir. Let's get moving, man. Somewhere. Let's look on the other side. I can't see a thing. It's in there. It's got to be. Wait a minute. I'll turn the spotlight on him. Did you see it? I saw something. Whatever it is, it's, it's down here on the floor. Johnny, kill the headlights. Remember the battery. Look at that. I never would have believed it. Seems believing. Hey. Hey, hey Johnny, bring me my camera. I want to get a picture of this. It's gone. But it was right there. I saw it. They'll believe us when Art backs us up. They can't accuse him of being a hysterical kid. Come on, let's get to town. You gotta be perfectly calm when you call the police. I'm glad you told me. Oh, darn that battery. Well, turn the lights off. It'll give you more juice. Yeah, good idea.
find any signs of life, sir? Anything? Nothing. Whatever flew that thing down here went up in smoke. Nothing left but ashes. Job well done, sir. Makes you proud, doesn't it, Lieutenant? What does, Colonel? Being part of a show like this. Protecting our country from alien invaders. Just think of it. Only this special unit and the President of the United States will know what happened here tonight. You mean you think we know what's happened? Well, of course we do. Colonel, this top secret security business is like scratching. Once you get started, it's hard to stop. What are you getting at, Lieutenant? Spit it out! Well, did it ever occur to you, Colonel, that there might be other units just like ours covering up other things? Can't go another step, Johnny. I've got to rest. I think we're safe here for a minute. I saw them pick him up and carry him away. Oh, Johnny, we've got to get out. We've got to. We can't just leave him to those creatures. What are we going to do? I don't know. Johnny, what if we turned ourselves into the police? Oh, you're kidding, aren't you? No, don't you see? If we just get the police out here, we'll get them to help Art out in some way. Yeah, that's an idea. Come on. Let's go use Larkin's phone. Well, that does it. Yeah, not a trace. It's a good night's work. Now we can go home and get some sleep. Yeah. I read about a jet crash in tomorrow morning's papers. What did you say? Uh, nothing, sir. Nothing at all. But I tell you, we're ready to give ourselves up. If you'll just come out to the Larkin farm. Now, you're not wanted anymore. Why don't you go home and sleep it off? What about Joe Gruen? Well, according to the autopsy we did, the cause of death was heart failure due to alcoholism. In fact, the alcohol content of his blood was the highest our coroner had ever seen. What about the fender of my car? You said that proved I hit him. Oh, you hit him all right, but only after he was dead. After? Yeah, the way we figured, he was drunk. And he ran the car off the road and down the hill. We found a liquor bottle near it. You found his car? Yeah, that's what tipped us off. He must have managed to get out of his car and climb back up to the road. But the exertion and the alcohol were just too much for his ticker, and he conked out. Then you kids must have come along and run over his body. But won't you come out here? What for? You're in the clear. What about taking your car? You still ought to want us for car theft. One of our prowl cars recovered my car when they went out to check on an airplane crash. But we stole it just the same. Now, don't worry, young lady. Your father took care of that. Now, look, why don't both of you go home and sleep it off? And don't bother me again. <sighs> Mr. Hayden. Mr. Hayden. Yeah. Trust Daddy. He came through again. What about Lover's Point? Oh, no, not at a time like this. Oh, don't be silly, Johnny. I mean the gang. They may still be there. They'll help us. They'll believe us. What makes you think so? Well, I know so. They aren't like our parents or the police. They won't think we're drunk or crazy or anything just because we're young. You know, I think you're right. Come on, let's go. Doggone kids. Look what they've done to Walt again. I'll fix them. You go this way, I'll go that. We were attacked by weird creatures. What? Tom, Liz, you gotta help us. And they captured him. The police wouldn't believe us. Will you help us? 
Show me the way, come on. Remember? Yeah. Okay, gang. Now everybody turn off your lights. Now once we get up there, we'll surround the clearing. Once we're in position, I'll give the signal like this. That'll be the signal for everybody to turn on your lights. Now has everybody got it? Yeah. Okay, gang, let's go. Hey, Johnny, wait for me! I was lonely back there. Let's go, Whitey. Come on, gang. Had you, but we... Oh, we burned them up. Wow, what a buzz I got on. Is this some kind of a gag? But how, Johnny? Just like his roommate. Do you get it, Joan? Acute alcoholism. These monsters kill their victims by sticking them with alcohol. Pure alcohol. Well, why isn't he dead, then, like Joe Groove? Let me finish. You don't happen to die unless you're already loaded. And if you are, that's it. Too much, I huh? just had too much. Hey, what? What's going on here? How did I get here? What is this, some kind of a joke? You've got to remember, remember. It's no, no use, Johnny. He won't remember a thing of what's happened. Yeah, just like anybody else has been on a binge. Now you keep listening to me. You've gotten a bull drunk, and I'm going to take the law into my own hands. If you're not off of my land in 60 seconds, I'm going to start shooting. Never believe us. Of course not. After all, we're just crazy kids. Come on, get out of here. But what if they come back again? What if there are more around right now? I guess the best thing we can hope that the next guy that runs into one is a 100% certified adult. <laughs> Messy youngs. Oh, well. Being young has its compensations. Hey, Paul. Hmm? Paul. How would you like to be my best man? Johnny, I can't get married like this. I'll swap dresses with you. <laughs> and then you can be my maid of honor. Who oh, does? Hey, have you two slipped your track? No, we just got back on it. Get in, man, and let's drive. So that's my story. Poor Daddy. Johnny and Joan helped me remember a, a little of it. But I wrote it, you understand. A true story? <laughs> well, that's the nice thing about all this book writing business. You pay before you read. Oh.